um, tabletop games and card games, I, I got the idea, um, freshman year, uh, of college, um, I was actually developing my own games because I had so many issues with Warhammer and D&D, &D, uh, they were just unapproachable. Um, I made my own tabletop game, which I need to go back on, I, I've stopped because of school. Um, it was just, it was just a simple game that, that was like Mech Warrior and, and Warhammer 40k, where it's, you, instead, instead of Warhammer 40k, where you have an army, you only have one unit, and you, you expend resources on. And it was just very dumbed down and very simple, but also very complex, um, where you just make a mech, and you fight other mechs and war machines. Um, I guess what got me into thinking about doing that is I thought making making D and D stories was just so easy and making characters was uh just a uh a, a, such an easy process for me that I uh thought making games would be fine. Um I guess I'd blame my, my analytical thinking. Um I wanted to be a programmer for a long time so Picking puzzle pieces and putting them together was just something that came natural to me, so... And that's that's what I looked at games, was just taking mechanics and throwing them together and changing them slightly and seeing which ones worked with other ones and whatnot, and, uh... Yeah, that's that's how I did tabletop games. Um, I haven't... Well, no, I finished one uh, and published it for free. Didn't get that far in popularity, because, I don't know, probably just marketed it wrong. Um, the other ones I've, I've never finished because they're just such large projects. If I have to say a favorite, role-playing games, tabletop role-playing games are probably my favorite. Um, because I am a big proponent for creative thinking. I believe that everyone, no matter how many people, and I've always met people that say, I can't do that. What you guys are doing, I can't do it. I can't be that imaginative. And I think all it takes is for them to not have that stigma in their mind that they're going to fail. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and I know that there's other role play, other game masters and other people that play games that are a lot more competitive. You know, they try, they try to encourage their, their players to... Um, one up each other or betray each other, and that's cool. And I, I'm totally fine. And I've done that with myself um, on on occasion. But I really try to. I want to develop everyone's story and get them excited that they're there, that they feel like all of a sudden there's this entire creative side of them that they never knew was inside in, in their inner self, and they can bring that to light. Because how many times during a day, with all of us having school, work, everything we do, do we have time to actually sit and like just develop? in a totally non-biased environment where we can all flourish and become creative people. It just hardly ever happens. Um, so, like, you know, Dungeons & Dragons, it, it's a time classic. It's it's done over and over again, and it's great. So, I mean, you know, it's one of the originals. So, I'd say, you know, it's, it's always on the top, you know, 10. Um, my friends just picked up, on board game-wise, they picked up an Arkham Horror uh, board game, which is a lot of fun. It's kind of a co-op kind of role-playing-esque, but it's a little more, um, it's a little more just kind of like a board game. There's not really, like, you could develop characters. Um, I ran for a long time, I ran, uh, back in the 90s, and, uh, because how old I am, and, uh, even recently I did for a small stint, I did some World of Darkness, it was like Vampire the Masquerade, World of the Apocalypse, it was all kind of a horror-based, um, theme, and I ran that for years, in, out of high school and into college, and then I picked it up again like a year ago and ran it for a small stint. Um, uh, it's always a fun because there's a lot of people that like the horror genres mm -hmm. uh, and developing characters that... Uh, it, it's it's fun to, to actually, um, as a game master, to not just worry about making their players feel heroic or epic, mm -hmm. but actually scare them mm -hmm. or make them think of moral quandaries that kind of tweak their psyche a little bit and at the end of it be like wow did i you know should i have done that or oh my god sean actually put something that messed up into a game <laughs> and <laughs> now i don't know if i want to come over to his house and hang out with him <laughs> again uh you know it's it's fun to like you know kind of 
mess with players once in a while, but in a way that they're going to, like, come out of it and, like, have these great stories to talk about. Friend groups, it's a, it's a social tool, card games. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was homeschooled and when, like, growing up, going to the card shop and hanging out with my friends was, like, the only time I got to socialize, really, with other people my age. That's a it's a pretty interesting thing. It's like yeah, you can kind of you can kind of tell what well, like if you took me into a card shop and you didn't let me see what game they were playing, I might be able to guess which game <laughs> it is just by the people that are playing it. Cuz like typically magic, the players are a little bit older. Um and then there's like there's a lot of guys like in their early 20s that play too. But then like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokémon, there's a lot more teenagers and kids that play. Um, it's also the different cliques that they're in. Yeah. Like, like, I don't... Okay, with with anime conventions, when you go to the, the tabletop gaming and, and analog gaming, as you want to say, um, you, you, you can see around and definitely see, because uh, with them, with, with anime conventions and gaming conventions, there's definitely cliques in place. And you can see, like, they... They post on Reddit and play Magic. They post on Tumblr and play Force of Will. Like, it's it's crazy that you can... Yeah, what is, like, the different, like, looks? Like, how can you tell? Um, like, Pokemon, yeah, like I said, age is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Like, Pokemon is usually a lot, a lot of kids. And then, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a lot of teenagers. And then Magic is a lot of older players. Magic's uh, been around the longest. Magic has yeah. been around the longest, and it's just it's not a it's not a matter of complexity so much as like content. The, no, it's it's like I'd say like the art style and the, the wording definitely helps. To I that. I think it's just a stigma mostly oh, I think? is because Yu Gi Oh is I think Yu Gi Oh is the most complex game of the three. Yeah, but. Magic is the one that is, it just, it advertises itself as a, you know, a card game for older players.